All right, so this here is Ogopogo. And he is a Russian legless lizard, also called a Sheltopusik, or European legless lizard, glass lizard. They have lots of names. And uh, he's definitely one of the coolest things in my collection. I really like this guy. He's really interesting. Just look at that face. Yeah, just look at that face. He looks like, he looks so prehistoric to me. And, um, yeah, you can see he's looking around his food dish. He sees me, so he thinks I probably have something for him. But uh, w one of the things people ask that come over and see him is why is he a lizard and not a snake? Well, for one thing, just take a look at that face. That is uh, definitely the face of a lizard. He has eyelids. Snakes do not have eyelids. He has external ear openings. Snakes do not have external ear openings. So those two things right off the bat. Yeah, he also can't dislocate his jaw like a snake can. And unlike a snake, which has a comparatively short tail, he is basically all tail. Um, he's got a groove running down the side of his body. And right where that groove ends, somewhere around there, that's where his tail begins. And like a lizard, he can drop his tail and grow a new one. these guys, um, they're super easy to take care of. You're not gonna, there's not a lot of care information out there about them, so if you want me to do a proper care video, I can do that. I've only had them a little over a year, a year and a couple months, and uh, so I, wouldn't, I don't quite qualify as an expert, but I have done a lot of my own research. I've talked to a lot of people that keep them, so I do, I do feel like I have a decent body of knowledge. He's got an aspen bedding, 40 gallon tank. Usually he's got a big root over there to climb around on, but uh, that's soaking. And uh, you know he's got a heat lamp, of course. I don't provide him with UVB, which apparently is a little bit of a issue of debate. A lot of people provide them with UVB lighting, but um, a lot of people don't, including some professional zoo exhibits so until I see sufficient research suggesting that they actually need it I'm not really gonna worry about it so in the wild these guys are found in uh, like for like uh, open forest grassland type areas they are uh, carnivorous they eat insects small reptiles mammals things like that let's see if we can get him He's definitely hoping I got something. So let's see if I can give him a roach. He lost it. Usually I put his food in the dish so that he won't uh, ingest too much bedding or the roaches won't run off and hide. And... Yeah, he's got it now. Of course the dish is in the way. So. But I'll, uh, I got some, I got a video of him eating a mouse too. I'll, I'll post that at the end. He makes for a good garbage, garbage snake. As in if the snakes don't want to eat a mouse. He certainly will. Oh, he lost it again. Should have taken that dish out. There he goes. There, that's better. 
So as far as handling goes, he he's not a fan of it. Um, so don't usually pick them up. I haven't been bit yet, but I hear they have a pretty strong bite. Uh, in the wild, they eat a lot of snails and things like that, so I don't really want to get bitten by them. But usually when I pick him up, what he ends up doing is, is hissing and thrashing about a little. And he'll also like do barrel rolls, which are pretty cool to see, actually. Maybe I'll film him doing them one of these days. So he rolls around in your hands trying to, to get out. Yeah, you can see, like, he really does have, like, an almost, like, retro dinosaur kind of look to him. And, and he gets his name Ogopogo from a popular lake monster in Canada from Lake Okanagan. He just has, like, that kind of, like, lake monster look to him, I feel. So as a, you know, I think I already mentioned it, but these guys are mostly wild caught. They're not very popular, so I don't think they're over harvested or anything like that. Uh, but there are some people working on breeding them. If I ever found another one, I would certainly like to try myself. But he's the only one I've ever seen sold. But there are people working on trying to breed them without much success. Super easy to take care of, but for whatever reason, they're not breeding well in captivity. See if we can get him to eat another one, and a smaller one this time. Yep, so roaches make up most of his diet. He'll also eat crickets. Um, And thawed mice. He used to be big on superworms and earthworms, but for whatever reason, he kind of not into those anymore. Some people feed them ground turkey, snails, and slugs. I don't have access to snails and slugs except from outdoors, and I don't want to feed them food from outside. Occasionally, I give them eggs, like gecko eggs and stuff, that I don't want to hatch. Oh, man. Look at that! Now he's getting a drink. Yeah, so I would love to be able to use this guy for educational programs. I feel like he's got a lot to offer. He's very interesting, fun to talk about, and uh, can teach a lot about evolution. The evolution of snakes, convergent evolution. Because even though he himself is not a snake, we of course all know where snakes came from. Snakes evolved from lizards back during the Mesozoic. And they've just had the opportunity to, to diversify and evolve their own set of characteristics that unite them as a group. Making them easier to distinguish from lizards. But no doubt earlier snakes would have been very lizard-like. And, and you can see it going on, you know, it's, it's basically like history repeating itself. You get lizards like skinks and long-tailed lizards, and they're very snake-like with just these little tiny legs. And then you end up with some lizards like this guy here, no legs at all. Still a lizard, no legs. So he's a very fascinating animal, fun to talk about. I don't know if he'll let me hold him, but we can give it a we can give it a shot. I'm just gonna hold him in the cage. I'm not gonna take him out. Yeah. So you can see. I don't know if you can see it where my thumb is. This, that's where his groove ends. 
right there. So everything past that is tail. It's got a long tail. I'm being pretty good about being held right now. It's not going to take them all the way out. He measures about 30, 32 inches. So almost three feet. These guys can get up to four feet. So he might need a bigger cage someday. Being a lizard and not a snake, he's not nearly as flexible as a snake is. Uh, when I bought him, the pet store told me he would probably do it right in a 20 gallon long, but I could quickly tell that he was way too cramped in there. He couldn't bend and turn around like a snake can. And they had him in a 10 gallon tank, which when I bought him, he had lots of rubs on his noses from trying to get out of there. Yeah, look at him. He's a cool guy. So yeah, it's important to try to kind of support their weight. Be gentle with them. And yeah, that's Ogopogo. So if you have any questions about Ogopogo, or his hair, or legless lizards in general, feel free to comment. Make sure you like and subscribe. And thanks for watching.